Hey everyone, Ariel Labs here with the Spending Time Podcast. I am joined by fellow Blog to Watch team member David Breden again. Hey David, how are you? Hey everyone, all's good. How's it going? We are going to talk about our controversial weekend. Mm. Uh, I first had an article published on Forbes um, about, it was called Paid Influencer Marketing for Luxury Watches Prompts Growing Consumer Resentment. Um, after SIH 2018, I had seen a lot of things that, allow, that allowed me to believe it's time to talk about the phenomenon of uh, paid influencers, people being paid for their opinions. It's, it happens everywhere, but it happens a lot in the luxury world. Um, it's, it's a lot of female products. I don't think you see it as much with men's products, but I could be wrong. I'm not the biggest social mm -hmm. media user. But in the luxury world, you now have brands that are just paying social media influencers to say, hey, this is cool, you should buy it. It's been happening for several years now. Brands have put a embarrassingly high amount of money into doing it. So And exposure. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, this is a whole big topic we discussed. So, uh, I felt this was uh, this was a lot of rele relevance. I think retailers need to b know about this, and shareholders mm -hmm. need to know about this. I think you know a lot of people need to understand uh, that this is going on. I think marketers that make these decisions, they can't just say to themselves, "Oh, everyone's doing it." And that's you know we have conversation. That's kind of their mentality. It's it's. It's very cavalier, and it's like you can never find out that we're doing it, or everyone is, or if this is this is how we modernize. People always say we can't look in the past; we have to go in the future. I'm like, you guys crazy? Like, because you're doing the 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 next latest get rich quick marketing scheme doesn't mean that people are going to clap and celebrate it. So, yeah, you're not revolutionaries, okay? So it's <laughs> yeah, and we saw consu I mean, look, we we fight for the consumer, and we saw consumers getting like really 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 upset about this and we are consumers but if you start pissing off people that are literally gonna not buy your watch or or walk away from your brand because you are basically trying to buy people's opinions and pass it off as as earned media then I'm sorry you're hurting the brand and who we're angry at and I think everyone needs to realize it's not the brand um, we are we are specifically speaking about certain managers who are making these decisions. These are proud brands that we're talking about, which leads me to the. I'm just going to answer this one time. This is the most common question that we had, you know, in the the article that was published a couple of days later on a blog to watch, titled "Influencer Marketing in the Watch Industry Has Gone Too Far." was was longer. Mm -hmm. um, we worked on it as a team, and it has a lot of comments. And the most common comment throughout all of this is why aren't you guys citing more specific examples and and for me that yeah. sort of misses the point but maybe you can articulate what is our reason for not pointing out a few individuals well it's 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 weird you know because people feel like something only exists if there are you know um, people or, or entities that you know you can point at and, and put the blame on but here the, the yeah, I think if we pointed out anyone specifically that would take away you know remove the attention from the problem from the actual problem it's not a matter of who's doing it or who's not doing it or who is doing it in what way uh, but rather the the entire uh, practice and the way it affects uh, the consumers, the brands, and uh, just this whole uh, industry at the moment. That's my take on it. What's your take on it? I mean, look, I think that if we focus on a few key individuals or brands or influencers or whoever they're doing this, it misses the point. The point is not, here's a couple of bad actors and they should be stopped. It's there's a practice going on which is bigger than any one research project. What are we going to do? Like spend a week straight like chronicling this? We're not building a case to take these people to court. What we're trying to do is discuss a problem that is not being discussed about in writing. You know, yep. this issue is not something that we invented. We're not the first persons to be like, hey, um, are these people's opinions being purchased? I remember starting a couple of years ago and this is what a lot of people may forget, on a blog to watch, we just wrote articles about products we liked and then people would start having comments of like, this is a paid, you know, this is an ad. And I was like, where is this coming from? Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, we were, we, it was really genuinely surprising when people started like, oh, yeah, how much did you get paid? Or, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what, where is, 
why do people think that we're necessarily paid? It was it was something we had to sort of reverse engineer, uh, you know, where, where they were coming from, right? Yeah, I mean, we we were not writing articles that we had been paid to write that looked like they were our opinion. I mean, we'd been we'd been offered money for that. You know, that's the funny thing. We're still offered money for that, and you know, and, a lot of the time, and yeah. some t- some of the comments. You know, and again, really, the the point of this discussion is to talk about people's feedback and try to address as much of it as possible. Yes. Um, some of the comments were like, "You're just jealous. You're jealous that other people are getting money that that you want." And I'm like, "No, because we've been offered money for that same reason. Like, and we've said no to mm-hmm. it. And and you, you know, we continue to say no to it. I, I'm I'm not jealous. I'm disappointed that the industry that makes us a living that allows this business to run uh, has very close colleagues as well as clients that are gravitated towards behavior that's that's in the, not in their best interest it's not a sustainable business practice on, on, yep. on any front consumers aren't going to put up with it it's not going to work for brands um, you know the the most uh, influential influencers are just going to be very expensive and if the brands are spending the kind of money they charge on that I mean they ha- they should be doing so many other long-term relationship building things with spe- with with consumers if you're going to spend a million dollars what is it you want to spend you want to spend it on like 10 people who have big fo- followings and you're never going to change their mind and you're just going to get one flash in the pan after that's gone or do you want to spend that money on an ad campaign that will send a message to a consumer that may stay with them for years, maybe the rest of their lives. That's relationship yep. building. Yeah, I'm not saying that you don't need both. I, th- I think you need, you know, the, the, the flash in the pan thing a little bit. Uh, but you do need the relationship building way more than it is being done right now. I feel that the sometimes these luxury products are being marketed as uh, as though they were impulsive uh, purchases which they are a lot of the times you know people want to express that they are doing well right now by buying something that's cool and hip and popular and uh, and rare and expensive right now not a thousand years from now and and there's this connection between between saying this for a flash and getting it in a flash for you know, for a lot of money, and just 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 flinging it, and then getting rid of it a year later, and somehow these two provoked one another, these two um, situations somehow. But it's it's not it's not a long term you know plan. That's I, the I, problem. I think you're saying too. Yeah. Look, and I want to thank everyone that attempts to call us out. If you see something that looks suspect, or looks like we're being hypocritical, or whatever you it is, call us out. If we can't defend our behavior, we're probably wrong, and we'll not do it next time or change whatever we did we're not mm-hmm. we're not trying to be an authority just because you know we own the place um we want <laughs> to discover the truth we want yeah. to make sure that whatever we talk about is as close to being the the right thing as possible but there are certain times where people are just contrarian and you know we're against something they feel like we have an agenda that they don't necessarily like, so they're going to go against it. That's just kind of how it is, you know. No doubt, we've all done things to rub some people the wrong way from time to time. But you know, it's funny. The weirdest compliment I get, and I'm sure you hear similar things when they meet with us, is um, you haven't wavered, Ariel. Ever since you started till now, you've had you know the same integrity. You've done business the you know in in, in the same way. You, you haven't you haven't changed you've you've made you've been, you've stayed the same person they say it in a good way which is good and i think what we see a lot is people that sort of just go where the money is kind of like politicians like you look over their <laughs> career and their opinions change with whoever they're hanging out with yet we have a certain integrity um it's not because we we're stubborn we won't change our minds we change our minds all the time but we have a certain set of rules and principles that drive what we're doing and it's it's bigger than it's bigger than a paycheck. I mean, yeah. if we were happy doing things that were unethical, uh, David and I would would have long ago been in other careers. Like we're smart people, we could have made a lot of money deceiving people. Like it would have been fine. I mean, I'm a lawyer, okay? What do people say about lawyers? Like I would be fine. <laughs> but yeah, that's a problem I have. I don't want to do that, and I'm not perfect. But I I really genuinely feel like I want each and every person who is participating in the watch hobby to have a good experience 
And I'm sorry, not be bullshitted by brands. I don't think that, that people spending this much money deserve that. And also we enjoy what we are doing and the way we are doing it. So we want something, we want to create and maintain something that's sustainable. You know, if and, and when something like this happens or whatever happens and, and we get whatever, you know, approached by whatever idea, we think about how that affects our relationship with, with you guys, with the audience, because that's our only long-term plan. There's no other way around it. And if you start going against it, you start deceiving the audience, you start, you know, doing these short-term things, sooner or later, they are they are destined by design you know, to, to fire back at you. And that's another reason why we look at these things and we say no, because we want to keep doing this for a long time. So what did you think were some of the more interesting pieces of feedback? You know, there, again, there's... There's almost 120 comments. Uh, again, I have some. Let's say there's 100 comments, you know, on this article. Did anybody say anything that surprised you? Um, in a positive way, uh, there there were people who said, you know, that they don't care about it or they don't even know what an influencer is or why why anyone would want to be one. And, and of course, some of that is ignorance, but it's blissful ignorance. And I was like, God, I envy those people who are not <laughs> exposed to, to social media in any way, shape, or form. Well, that's well, that's well, so amazing. Hold on. This is what I, I totally agree with you. And, and some people, they were like, could you define why this is even a problem? Like, <laughs> what's interesting is that I, I'm somewhere in the middle, right? Like, you're, yeah. you're, you are definitely part of the social media generation. I'm, I'm on the cusp. Like, I grew up into it, but I didn't grow up with it. And... Yeah. I'm kind of okay either way and we have some people or a lot of people on the site who for them the idea of like following a bunch of random people on Instagram seems like the biggest waste of time ever which it actually is <laughs> they're like I know what I like I have a job I know the music I like I know what I like to wear like I have some hobbies you know watches and maybe travel and cars and electronics and I follow sites just about that if there was Instagram just for watches Maybe I'd look at it, but <clears throat> the problem is all the unpleasant parts of Instagram also come into the Instagram area for watches. So yes. you're kind of like you can't divorce yourself from some of the annoying things about social media. And yes, there's plenty of people that you can you can get on totally fine without it. So this whole discussion is totally moot if you just go to like watch magazines and stores and maybe go to some collector groups. All of this conversation doesn't affect your life at all. Yeah, and we are happy for you for that. Um, so yeah, I was surprised by that as well. I thought it was interesting how people took this conversation a little bit further. Like I was speaking very specifically about the topic, which is, mm -hmm. you know, you need to look for media whose opinion must be earned and watch out for media whose opinion is purchased. And I've been doing this ever since I was a kid. I mean, you know, you pick up like, men's health magazine and you're like you know nothing in here is going to criticize any product not really um <laughs> everything is supposed to make you feel good and like it's good to inform me about stuff but like i'm not going to trust the review on these like jackets like i think that they thought these were cool jackets but this isn't exactly the final word on this yeah. so i think we sort of generally know that but today with the internet the it's people have a business of creating marketing that looks like it's an opinion. Like people are trying to trick you as opposed to just being very lackadaisical about what we used to call mm. journalistic integrity. Like we and, are in the era of, of intentional mass deception. And the brands are super excited to take advantage of that. Super excited. Oh yeah. They they freaking love that love, love this stuff because they, they are like, Oh wow, can you make a a review that sort of like says what we want it to say and doesn't say stuff that we don't want to be said about the brand or about whatever. So yeah, we get approached so much of the time over the last, I think it, for me at least, you know, when I started saying this, I think it was two or three years ago when I uh, really started seeing that uh, happen systematically when, when brands would reach out and they would say hey we have this budget and we want to and they, they reached out and with a tone that that implied that it was completely natural you know it was perfectly normal for them to say we have this money and we will give you this money if you write this and this about us it was and, pretty natural i agree it, it was like yeah. there was no there was no shame there was no 
No, it was... It, there it, wasn't it, like, do you guys do this? It was just like, hey, you know, this is what we want to spend money on. <laughs> now it's your turn to do it. <laughs> yeah, now you have to go ahead and say yes or you get nothing. And there's been a lot of conversations we've just completely walked away from. Yeah. You know? Uh, that's, yeah, that's one thing. But here's, here's something that's, that's a really good question in the comments where, where I think, uh, you know, that I think it needs to be addressed. And that is where people think that um, us displaying, for example, ads or banners or sponsored posts or something like that, which are labeled as such, obviously, and very clearly, um, are essentially the same thing as what is happening with the influencers. So well, how would you respond to that? Well, again, this is what I was talking about earlier when I said people took the conversation like further than it than it needed to go. And But it's a good question. I think it's a good question. Okay. They're trying to make the point that if there's any advertising of any kind, in fact, if we have any monetary incentive in what we do in any way, we mm -hmm. are by definition biased and the content is influenced in some way. And that's especially the fact if we have advertisers that are selling the types of product and we can no long, we could, we have no ability to say that we're unbiased and I say you know what I agree I've never claimed that we're unbiased I try to explain our opinions and how we get to the ideas we have and tell people they're free to disagree with us there are certain rules like if a watch is illegible I can describe a few scientific arguments to describe why uh, this is obscuring the hands, which means you can't see the hands, which means it's illegible. Like you can't, you can't argue on certain <clears throat> functional types of elements of a watch, but on things that you can argue, I'm like, you guys are allowed to have your own opinion, and I and I want people to do that. So I think what happens is if there's an, a watch that we advertise, we do before we even allow it as an advertiser have to ask ourselves, is this something that could theoretically be covered editorially. And if the answer is no, and we can't think of any percentage of the audience, at least 5 to 10% uh, of the audience, which is pretty big, that might mm -hmm. be interested in this product, we just have to walk away. I mean, I had to do this two days ago. You know, there's a lot of these little brands out there. They have, they have plenty of budget, and they come to us all the time. And I have to routinely say no because I know that I can't go to anyone on the website and be like, you know what? As people interested in watches, you should definitely get one of these. Like if it's just mm -hmm. a general fashion audience that wants to spend like a hundred bucks on a watch, that's fine. But like I think that buying and owning one of those goes against the whole mission of what we're trying to do. We don't tell people to avoid products like that. We just never buy them in the first place. Yeah. And do not promote them in any way, shape, or form either. Yeah, we're not. I mean, look, some of these products are, are fine. It's it's just a watch. Uh, yes, it has a bunch of cheesy marketing. Yes, it looks like so many other watches, but you wear it on your wrist. It tells the time. And yeah, it's probably not going to break in 10 dice. In that sense, yeah, it's a fine watch. But where's the originality? Where's the character? Where's the thing that you would actually want to... Uh, collect if you're a collector. What's the thing to be enthusiastic about if you're an enthusiast? If we can't find those things, we're like, I'm sorry, we can't help you here. We have to do that. So, you know, to a degree, the audience just needs to trust that we're on it. And I know that's a really bad standard because it's very difficult to measure and there's not a lot of um, ways of auditing that. But I think if you develop a relationship with our content, you can you can understand what we get excited about. You see where you know we, you see where we're trying not to step on too many toes. You see what makes us angry. It's like a friend, you know. We're we're about as honest as we can be, and we're definitely more honest than the rest. We're trying to set an example here, but you know, it, it's not about being perfect. It's saying we've just a f facilitated an entire conversation about how we're pissed off with liars. If we were doing anything where we're trying to deceive people, why would we even have that discussion in the first place? Yeah, that's, that's a very good question. Yeah, Raise the awareness of the issue. Because, because, like I say, in the comments, people started raising, raising their own questions, which were rev relevant questions. Like, uh, hey, guys, do you do this? Or are you affected by this? How do you explain this or that? And we have to go there, which we do, and we explain where we stand on these situations, like you just did two minutes ago. So it's important to have this discussion, but having this open discussion and responding to all these comments and queries, I think, really creates a different sort, a different 
um, quality of relationship between uh, a publication and the audience. And it's extremely rare, not only in the watch industry, but anywhere I look. Uh, you know, if I look at tech sites, tech reviews, car reviews, um, the two other things that I basically care about being watches, I don't really see this happen anywhere. And just because I do this and I see how brands try and operate, I can I can you know uh, filter down the the different car channels and tech channels you know like uh, <laughs> I can go to like ten percent of them and say okay I trust these guys in at least some way shape or form when I read the review and the others I just ignore. Here's the part of the conversation that we're not going to get into, and some people brought it up, and I think it was important. It's why do media sites feel compelled to take this money in the first place, and hmm. not everyone is in the digital media business, but if you read at all the news about internet media of any kind, you know it's not exactly an easy time to be uh, uh, in, in, in the media business. You hear about magazines shutting down all the time, you hear about further consolidations online, you hear how uh, you know young people just don't really read a lot of news, they mostly look at things <laughs> on social media, they, they read headlines at best. We, we exist in a time where doing business as a quote unquote traditional you know media where there's this strict line between revenue and, and editorial and all this stuff, the vast majority of businesses simply cannot afford a structure like that because mm -hmm. advertising as a commodity is essentially infinite. It, it wasn't always that way, but right now, if you are an advertiser and you're trying to canvas an entire area or demographic or interest group, good luck. You're going to spend all of your money immediately. And so <laughs> it used to be that there was a finite amount of advertising you can buy and you could sit back comfortably like, you know what, we got all the messaging we need in this area. These days you can't do that. So advertisers have changed their behaviors in a lot of ways, which has changed the very fundamentals of how media is supposed to do business. And one of the ways that, that media, new or existing, receives income is in exchange for promoting things. And this is something that boggles my mind, and, and this is the problem is almost becoming legitimized and mainstream. Like we're talking about it as the bad, unethical thing that it is. But yeah. on YouTube, YouTube itself, and we know this because we have a big channel on YouTube, actually recommends to people to get, quote unquote, a brand deal. <laughs> they tell people as a way to make money, go out and find brands. I don't really tell you how to do it. They just assume that you know how to find them in some marketplace. Go out and find brands and literally say, I will make videos to help you sell your stuff. And then there's like some very small print about like practices you shouldn't do and how you want to disclose this information. Okay, if YouTube tells their own, like, their own channels, we're sorry, we can't make you enough money. But if you really want money, why don't you take some advertiser money um, and, and, and not actually in the way that they really support your content, but just, you know, just make a brand deal. You know, here's mm -hmm. the thing. Unless you are a massive channel and you can have a, a brand sponsor a, a show or, or have messaging, which is not really going to blend with the editorial, that's possible. But the vast majority of people, remember, this is just a YouTube channel. This isn't a business. These are people yeah. that can be easily victimized by sophisticated advertisers. If you are an advertiser and you think you can get away with, can we just pay you to say good stuff about us? You're going to yep. ask. So the relative weakness Which they of do. media has prompted advertisers to feel like they can do this. So... It's very difficult to ask yourself, where does the solution to this problem begin? Because if, if channels like YouTube, which is about as legitimate as it gets, actually tells influencers that you should go out and get a brand deal with no oversight of any kind and just hoping that, that these two parties do it the right ethical way, how That's on earth up. are we going to start getting the lay consumer to be like, yo, this is probably not what I want to see? Yeah. And, and a lot of the times, I, I, I see these channels just uh, 
gracefully forget, you know, um, putting that little label there that says it includes paid promotion. And there are these guys who are buying new cars. Hey, I just bought this, and then I just bought another one next week, and so on and so forth. And I'm like, there's no way in hell that there was no incentive or no, you know, nothing. And I look at these channels, and I'm like, well, sometimes it says that there's a paid promotion or something like that, but people with like you know, one million followers or two million followers or subscribers, I should say, on YouTube, don't really just go out to these uh, manufacturers or, or, or tuning shops or whatever on their own dime and, you know, uh, don't charge for the time. And the moment you charge for your time to go anywhere, uh, you know, to do anything like this, I think that should say it includes paid promotion, right? So because you get paid for it. You know, again, we go back to the advertisers themselves. If they yeah. know that some media people, again, it's very hard to enforce the, the types of unfair uh, you know, business practice laws out there that, that are enforced in the United States by mainly the FTC and the FCC. It's very difficult to enforce these things, okay, mm -hmm. even if you break mm -hmm. rules. So advertisers know that they can ask people, like, hey, you know, we really want this coming across as being genuine, and I'm sure you do too. Why don't you just <laughs> leave out advertisement or sponsored or something like that? You know, it's 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 really in both in our best interest. And you know, if that's where the payday is coming from, how many advertisers and influencers are going to be like, okay, sure, you know, uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna drop you, and I'm not gonna allow this because this violates the law and my policies and my integrity with my audience. No, they're gonna be like, well, I guess no one will find out. And so you start to have this erosion of the, the letter of the law. And so until you have incentives to follow the law, people are not going to do it. You know, yeah. one of the things is advertisers need to stop being so shy about having advertising. Like, advertising has a bad rap, but so much of what we like, so much of what we buy, so much of who we are is a product of effective marketing. Brands and products that have reached us and changed our lives in a positive way. I don't know why we're so we're, we're so like upset about Adverse. being told something is an ad. Like, yeah. it, I want to hear from from brands that have something for me. Tell me about you so I can make a decision. I can't be a consumer if I don't know about you. There's nothing wrong with advertising. It's the manipulative part that people don't like. And today, there's just not a lot of incentive out there for people to be anything but as manipulative as humanly possible. Yeah, exactly. So do people go to airports and shake their fist at, you know, the ads, you know, when they are checking in, like, look at this watch ad, oh, it's an ad, I hate it. And then they open their, pull out their phone and they start looking at Instagram and they, they see all this manipulation going on and that's somehow perfectly fine and acceptable. It's ridiculous. I, I you know, this, this is going to keep going. And so I think the question for us moving into phase two of wherever this leads is wh what do we recommend people do? We can tell consumers watch out for this but it sounds like a lot of them are are very skeptical as it is and the ones that are being influenced um are maybe not the demographic look at this i'm i'm pretty convinced that the majority of people that watch brands reach with this deceptive advertising are people that like aren't really going to buy the product anyways to just afford watches you need to have a lot of education and experience and worldliness and money which and means you probably know about a lot of other things so by the time you buy watches you're probably a really smart consumer and so I, so in that sense I think the brands are wasting a lot of money and, and if people are duped and they're only duped one or two times they, they, they smarten up um, yeah. so I think that there's this mass amount of people who are hearing about the brands for the first time literally being tainted they're like <laughs> oh my god this brand is trying to reach me this way I'm never going to take them seriously like I'm l legitimately worried about brand reputation for the next generation because how corny is some of this influencer marketing going to look to a whole generation of people that we need to be the next set of consumers for watches for watches and a lot of other things too yeah. like, uh, I see your point so what what do we do? What do you think, as a responsible media publication, we should do as our next step to um, protect people against this, uh, educate people not to do this? Like, do we just keep walking around telling brands not to do this and and trying to set a good example? Because that's basically what we're going to do. That's what we've been doing. What we need to absolutely continue doing. That's one thing. And the second thing is. 
uh, when people come to a blog to watch and they see, for example, like a manufacturer visit that's labeled as a sponsored post because because we got paid, you know, to go there and, and write this stuff, and it's not including any sort of editorial whatsoever, which uh, sponsored articles do not uh, do. And they go to other sites and they look there and they see that they don't really ever see sponsored posts. Nothing is ever labeled. And they don't really see banners either. So the question is, how do these guys actually make their money? What, what, what part is the one where it's been paid and it's been influenced and it's been, you know, so, uh, all, all that kind of stuff. And when you do that and nothing is labeled, clearly everything falls under, you know, closer scrutiny sooner or later. And people will just lose their confidence in every piece of content that is being produced as opposed to saying, it's my, I, it's on me to decide whether or not I want to read this sponsored article. And people actually, and I've been amazed when we started doing uh, sponsored posts, which we produced because we started, you know, saying to brands, hey, you know, we can do probably a better job at <laughs> explaining what you are trying to uh, bring across as a message. And the uh, the the comments were overwhelmingly positive all the time on all of these posts. You can go back; anyone can go back and look at all of them. It's it's unbelievable how positive that is, and people are people are saying, yeah, this is how sponsored posts should be done, and so on and so forth. So it actually works, and people appreciate it because people say, here's a brand; they spent X amount of money, whatever that was, to bring me this message, and it's been done in a qualitative way. And I'm, of course, I see it's not an editorial, but it's just you know bringing and presenting facts about the manufacturer, for example, or a collection or history or whatever, in a way that is for consumer education as proposed and promoted by the brand itself. There's nothing wrong with that. So if you look around and no one else is doing it, it's hidden somewhere and possibly it's crossing the line between this and editorial. And that's that's just the worst. Yeah. Um I think that's you know that that brings up a lot of other topics, but I think that what people may not know is the amount of effort our team puts behind the scenes, paid or otherwise, to help create marketing campaigns sometimes don't ever have our names on it mm-hmm. and we are out there trying to produce the the types of marketing content that we advocate for and we see that it works meaning a brand has a message that they want to share one that we think would legitimately uh, pull cons- consumers over to their conversation to be interested in what they do and and maybe eventually buy something and we've been very successful at that and we're proud of that because we use authentic messages told in a real way uh, as voiced by the brand to the consumer. And as David said, it works very well, basically all the time. It's a, it's a winning formula, and that's the way it used to be. And so we feel confident that we've, we, we have seen something that works better. It takes more effort, yes. Is it potentially more expensive? Actually, I don't think it's potentially more expensive. I think it just takes more effort. Yeah. And so we think that there's a much better solution out there. And so it's not like we're just shaking our fist and being conservative and be like, you guys can't do anything. You guys have to fail. No, we, we're not saying that at all. We say use your marketing dollars on something more effective. It doesn't need to be a blog to watch, but it's the type of thing that a blog to watch likes. You know, yes, we want you to please our tastes, but that's because for, to a large degree we represent the people they're trying to sell to. Um, and we represent the mentality of the people they tried to sell to for literally generations now. So when the managers at the brands now, who don't really understand as much of the time, meaning uh, watch collectors and enthusiasts, try mm-hmm. to market to a demographic that's unfamiliar with the product, I'm like, why would you do that? Why would you like violate some of the <laughs> basic laws of marketing and that it's harder to get new customers than to sell to existing customers? Yet they do exactly that. So as we've had to, as David said, reverse engineer marketing in a lot of ways. Um, I do have some educational background in it, but a lot of us don't. We've we've been able to identify winning strategies. And I think that's what really galvanizes these conversations and our energy is because we know how they can do it better. We've seen it happen. In fact, you look at some of these historic brands with their archives. Look at the 1960s and 70s and 80s of watch ads. They're brilliant. They're great stuff. Like yeah. they can do it. <laughs> they yeah. can't do it. Um, they can replicate the watches they used to make 50 years ago, but not the strong points of, of advertising. Okay. All they need to do is look at a picture for that. The, the advertising thing, yes, they can look at the end product, but when they do, they don't know how to make a modern version of it. They only know how to like literally take a picture and copy it. 
Yeah. Or, or a blueprint. Or a blueprint. Um, even better. Even better. Yeah. On that note, I think it's time for us to, to wrap this uh, conversation up. There's a lot more being said in the two articles that Ariel mentioned in the beginning of, uh, of, the, of the podcast. One is on Forbes titled Paid Influencer Marketing for Luxury Watches Prompts Growing Consumer Resentment. And you can also find on the blog to watch uh, the article titled Influencer Marketing in the Watch Industry Has Gone Too Far. Um, two long articles, very detailed, and a lot more. Um, a lot of other points uh, being discussed there and also in the comments uh, on a blog to watch. Yes, and I do like that, I don't know if I penned it, but we started using the term black hat marketing to describe mm. a lot of the stuff we don't like. Um, so I think we're going to use that term more often. Anyways, thank you everyone for listening to this episode of Spending Time on Black Hat Influencer Marketing, and we'll see you next time. See you next time. Thanks. <laughs>